Happy Halloween, and in the spirit of the holidays, we're going to be stepping away from Friendship is Magic and Legend of Korra and looking at something a little more festive. Something I remember from when I was a kid. With that said, let's talk about the grim adventures of Billy and Mandy. Originally voted as the winner of Cartoon Network's Big Pick to become the newest cartoon cartoon, the series officially premiered in August 2001 and lasted until 2007. It focused on the Grim Reaper being forced to become the best friend of two demented demon children, a dumbass little boy named Billy and the spawn of Satan named Mandy. I love this show. It had a very dark sense of humor and knew how to do gross out perfectly. It also knew exactly what characters to punish in each episode. Well, most episodes. But the series wasn't supposed to end with their crossover with the kids next door in November 2007, as Maxwell Adams created the pilot for a potential spin-off called Underfist, which aired in October 2008. It was supposed to focus on some of the supporting characters of the original show, however, due to the changes at Cartoon Network, the series was never picked up, and instead they decided to add live-action programming to their network, a trend we hope will never happen again. In fact, note to self, review some of Cartoon Network's live-action shows. But anyway, does Underfist still hold up? Well, don your costumes, grab your candy, and let's first take a look at the writing of Underfist. Yes, I did find my old mask, because I can tell you this, this special is a lot scarier than Bad Hair Day. As I said earlier, the special follows five of the supporting characters from the original show, the first of which is Erwin. Oh, how do I describe Erwin? Imagine if you had Milhouse from The Simpsons and put every single black stereotype into him, and you will get someone not nearly as annoying as Erwin. That guy's wiggity whack, yo. Yo, Gatorade me, bitch. It's as if God himself were racist and wanted everyone on Earth to be racist as well, but still wanted to be subtle about it. Now that's not to say he can't be funny, because he can. But you'll notice quickly it's funnier when stuff happens to him, and not because of the stuff he does or the things he says. Oh, and he's also the son of a mummy and the grandson of Dracula. And if you're wondering how Dracula could even impregnate someone with no blood, I have to ask, why the hell are you thinking about Dracula's genitals at all? Next is Hoss Delgado. Groovy. One thing I find odd about him is that he looks as if he's aged about 20 years. In fact, in the show, he said he was 33, and here, his mother, yes, he lives with his mother, says he's 48. Yet everyone else looks maybe one year older at the most. I guess the puppet dimension just ages you faster. The next two characters are Jeff the Spider, Billy's son, don't ask, and Fred Fredberger, an elephant thing who is responsible for two of my favorite episodes, Keeper of the Reaper and Be a Fred. Be very a Fred. And last is Scar. N no, not that one. He was actually a big player in the Hector Con Carne show that was aired alongside Billy and Mandy in the beginning, since they were both created by Adams, before he moved to this show after that one got cancelled. Remember that sergeant next door neighbor from the Goosebumps episode Attack of the Lawn Gnomes? Scar is basically the same guy. Each character is pretty much on par with how they were in the original show. They don't feel any different as if they were flanderized to make it funnier. So, how's the plot? Well, it's a mixed bag. It starts with Erwin, Billy, and Mandy trick-or-treating, and after Billy and Mandy leave, Erwin feels sad and alone until Mindy the mega bitch! asks him for a favor. She needs him to go up to a scary-looking house to get some candy for her since she's too afraid to do it herself. He goes up, and as soon as he touches the doorknob, a portal opens and out comes an army of... Bunnies? Actually, this is Bon Bon, a marshmallow bunny who, with his army of chocolate bars, plan to hunt the trick-or-treaters, since they have spent every Halloween dressing up in costumes to scare real monsters. Haas and Scar manage to scare them back to the underworld, but Bon Bon takes Mindy and also the president, because why not, and now they must go and rescue them. I didn't realize how crazy that sounded till I said it out loud. Honestly, I never got how dressing up like monsters was supposed to scare monsters. Wouldn't that be like if in Monsters, Inc. they dressed up as a human to scare Boo back to her room? Well, I guess if they dressed up like Marty Feldman or Renee Zellweger, but I don't think they have many costumes like that in Monstropolis. So yeah, the story is really weird. 
but it does have some really great moments. There are several twists in the episode that are actually really surprising, and there are some pretty good dramatic moments. Granted, those are far outweighed by the comedy, but some scenes do have some genuine emotion to them. And it certainly has a lot going on in it, but that's actually one of its biggest problems. Too many subplots. I'm guessing the main story is the Underfish trying to defeat the candy monsters, but along with that, we have Erwin coming to terms with being half vampire and half mummy, Haas reliving something from his past that has something to do with Bon Bon, Jeff trying to be like a grown-up, Mindy turning into an ugly witch, Scar betraying the group, and Fred just wanting to have fun, I guess. Then there's having to give the villains motivation and making sure the supporting characters get enough to do. It's just too much. They don't have time to develop most of them, and in the end, a lot of it feels either rushed or contrived. I should feel sorry for Erwin, but all I'm wondering is, why is he just now worrying about his heritage? He's known about it his whole life, and it just comes out of nowhere. However, despite having all these things going on, they all come together in the end. I won't reveal how, but by the end, everything starts to make sense. So I guess it all evens out. But who cares, how's the action? The action scenes are a lot of fun. They are very fast paced and extremely well animated. And it does a great job setting up the tension as you begin to wonder, how will they get out of this? I think my favorite part of the episode has to be the scene where Erwin throws an exploding gem and it blows up half their vehicle, then we get something straight out of a Die Hard film. There are a few parts where the CG is obvious, but for the most part the animation is really good. However, I don't get why they had to redesign some of the characters. Like I said, Hoss looks like he's aged about 20 years, Jeff looked like he shrunk, and Fred... My god, it looks like he was crushed by one of those car crushing things. What are they called? Huh. I guess he had to lose a lot of weight living in the Arctic eating nothing but frozen yogurt and nachos. So despite a few weird redesigns, the animation is pretty good, and so is the voice acting and music. Oh, I'll get to the songs later, but the background music is just really good. However, the pacing's a bit off, I notice. As I said, there's a lot of things going on, and yet the special just sort of spends a few seconds on one aspect, then goes to something else before coming back to it a few scenes later. I mean, Jeff's whole story basically goes like, I want to have fun, but I have to be more responsible. Now I'm an adult. Being an adult is hard. Well, just because I'm growing up doesn't mean I can't act like a kid. Also, that moral is kind of terrible. But this is a comedy, so how does it work on that aspect? I would say the special is about 80% funny and enjoyable. It only starts to get boring in the last 15 minutes, which is why I think this should have been about 44 minutes long instead of an hour. While the twists and everything wrapping up was interesting, I wasn't laughing that much. Except for Hoss's secret weapon. That was hilarious. Also, I didn't find Fred as funny as I did in the original show. He did get a few laughs, but he was absolutely hysterical in his appearances before. Well, here I can't help but feel he was mostly just put in for fan service. I think the problem was that he wasn't really annoying any of the characters. Sure, they question his actions, but they just sort of shrug it off and move on. Come on, the way to make annoying characters funny is when they are annoying the other characters more than the audience. Hoss and Scar, though, are freaking great. I love these two, and I kind of wish the special was only about them. There's also a lot of cameos from the old show and some great pop culture references and fourth wall jokes, including one of the best, if not the best, fake out endings ever made. And the songs are great. Mindy's song is a creepy little number that's filled with many disgusting images. Jeff and Fred's song about never wanting to grow up is surprisingly catchy and kind of charming in that little kid trying his hardest even though he can't really sing kind of way. And the end credits theme? Just listen to this. The Nunderfist will rescue you. It's what they do. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. And there's plenty of other funny lines throughout. He gave us pennies? Pennies are the worst treat of all! I don't know, it's gotta be a step up from Skittles. 
Seriously, this stuff tastes like wax. The only reason you would eat it is because it's the only thing left in the bag and your mom won't buy you any more because you still have some Halloween candy left. Well, Mom, how about next Halloween I go to that creepy guy's house down the street that you told me to stay away from and he can lure me into his basement with promises of candy and video games and then do unspeakable things to me. Would you like that, Mom? Would you? Disclaimer, this was all made for the sake of a joke. My mother is a saint and I was never seduced and or molested by any creepy guys who lived down the street. So overall, Underfist was pretty good. I'm not sure if it really would have worked as a series since the characters are funnier in small doses, but you never know. If you weren't a fan of Billy and Mandy, you most likely won't like this, but if you were, you'll probably enjoy it. Nowhere near as good as something like the Big Boogie Adventure, but it has plenty of funny moments, great action, and some little nods to the original show for you to seek out. I hope you all have a happy Halloween, and if you'll excuse me, I gotta go watch a bunch of Christmas episodes. You'll see in December. So, thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time.